is the Firefly Flywoo Nano 1S. Flywoo's naming conventions are impossible. This is from Flywoo. It is a 1S voltage open prop 1.6 inch quadcopter. So this quadcopter can be ordered with one of three different video systems, analog, HD0, or walk snail. The walk snail and the HD0 both come with the 1S video transmitter, so they shouldn't be too much heavier than the analog one. We're gonna put them on the scale in just a second and see how that how they compare. Obviously, the one that you buy is gonna depend on which set of goggles and which video system you use. Um, if you're not sure about the pros and cons of those different systems, I have a video run to help you decide on which video system is best for you. I'm going to put a link to that down in the video description if you're still on the fence. They come in both a dead cat and a true X geometry. So how much freaking difference does that make? And the real question is, is something this small usable outdoors? And is something this powerful and acrobatic usable indoors without prop guards? And yeah, they sell it with prop guards, but like, that's not, no, that don't, just get rid of those. I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're gonna learn something today. If it seems like you've seen this video on my channel before, that's because a little while back I reviewed the 2S version of the Firefly Baby Nano, which had two inch props. And those bigger props and bigger motors meant that they could make a little more power and carry a little bit more weight. But there's a real sweet spot for very light 1S quadcopters, especially when they've got this 1002 motors on them. There was a time when I thought 1002 was just way too freaking big for a quadcopter this size. But we've seen, especially as you get into a little bit heavier ones, that these larger motors really do an exceptional job at making, at solving a lot of the problems that come with very small, lightweight, underpowered, tiny whoops. Well, that's what we're comparing to here, tiny whoops. The frame is basically just one flat piece of carbon. There's not a lot to say about it. It is two millimeters thick, which is a good balance of stiffness, strength, and durability for a quadcopter of this size and weight. Suffice it to say that if something breaks on this guy, it's probably not gonna be the frame because there's just no, there's no weight and so there's no energy in a crash. The camera is held in with a 3D printed canopy and Flywoo says they've upgraded the canopy from previous versions to add more durability, but I don't have a ton of experience with the previous versions to really give you an A-B comparison. There are some small differences in the canopy depending on if you've got the analog version, which is what we're looking at now. This is the walk snail version, which has just a little bit more plastic to help hold the slightly larger camera and the HD0 version appears to be basically the same as the analog version. The flight controller is the Flywoo Goku F411. The specs on it are almost the same for all of the quads uh, in that they all have an F411 chip and a five amp ESC. The F411 chip is the weaker 
of the two F4 chips, the F411 versus the F405. It's going to have the main thing that differentiates it is that it has fewer available UARTs. There are two available UARTs configured on here and one soft serial. The bottom line, though, is that you're probably not going to be like putting a GPS on this. So probably the UARTs will do what the factory delivered them to do and you're, that's just going to be fine for basically the life of the quadcopter. Now, if we look at the analog one, we can see that it has a separate ExpressLRS EP2 style receiver with the little ceramic antenna. That's actually kind of cool because the little ceramic antenna is completely self-contained there and there is no separate antenna to hang off the quadcopter anywhere. The reason that the receiver is not built into the flight controller is that the analog bird has a built-in video transmitter. It's got a 250 milliwatt analog VTX and uh, so then there wasn't room presumably to also put the receiver on there. The difference between them is that on the digital birds the flight controller has a built-in Express LRS receiver, at least the ones I ordered did. You can also order it with other receivers if you're not running Express LRS. But let's be honest, for micros like this, Express LRS is king because the receiver can easily be built into the flight controller. No additional weight, no additional hassle for mounting and amazing range and penetration that a lot of other protocols just don't give you. So for the digital birds, we can see that the Express LRS antenna is installed here on the arm and uh, there is an LED in here which shows the receiver status. The receiver is serial based, although it is built into the flight controller. That doesn't mean that it has to be SPI based. Serial based is, in my opinion, the one that you want. And if you're not clear on that, I've got a video about why Express LRS SPI receivers are annoying. And I'll put a link to that down in the video description. Suffice it to say for now, it's the good kind, in my opinion. Flywheel are shipping these quadcopters with a new kind of battery connector, the AN30 plug from GNB. And there's three key things about this plug. First of all, the A30 plug has similar or better current carrying capacity to the BT 2.0. You're going to get less voltage loss, lower resistance, all of the advantages there. And the difference, as you can see, is that the A30 connector has a tiny little groove right here in the side, and the BT 2.0 connector does not. And what that means is that a BT 2.0 battery will not plug into an AT, an A30 connector. Oh, you could probably jam it in there. Will it plug in? I gotta know. I gotta know, right? I gotta just try to jam it in. Oh yeah, it totally, it'll just freaking go right in there. It'll go right in there. It's not, you don't even have to push that hard. So yeah, it's just, it's cross compatible with BT 2.0 both directions. <laughs> Let's do what I said I was gonna do and weigh them. Analog, 26.5 grams plus battery, 43.4 grams. Wow, this is really not a tiny whoop. Like if we compare that to this Tiny Whoop, 19 grams, 26 grams. And the Tiny Whoop's gonna be around 22 grams with its battery, because the battery is so much lighter. This is like twice as heavy as a 65 millimeter Tiny Whoop. Now I know we got bigger props. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but like when I think about this guy, it's it, like in my mind, it was smaller and lighter because they're kind of they're kind of similar. And the first ones of these were made by taking the prop guards off of a tiny whoop and sort of building something like it. This is not that. It's a good thing we've got these 1002 motors to really add power and help make up for some of that weight. 26 grams for analog. Does the dead cat make a difference? No, it's like identical. So no difference for dead cat versus freestyle layout. 26 grams, walk snail. Ooh, 34 grams. Well, that's a, that's a step up. HC0, 32 grams. Okay, so HC0 and walk snail are going to be a fair whack heavier, uh, but how much is that going to matter? The only way to know is to take them out and fly them. Here's your card. And I'm sorry about the background, but just you really want the lights, don't you? We're not doing the lights. That's it. I decided. Now it's time to put these guys in the air and see how they fly. But before we do that, I gotta take a second to remind you, I have a Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month, or as more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you. 
patrons get access to my Discord server, which is a great place to chat about FPV, get help with your problems. It's even a buy, sell, trade forum where you can get rid of some stuff or find new stuff at good prices. Uh, patrons also get access to podcast downloads of all of my live streams. And I've recently started experimenting with doing early uploads of my content, ad-free early uploads of my content on Patreon. That's the single best way to support the work that I do here. I often have to watch a lot of somebody's content before I decide I want to sign up as a patron. And if you're still in that honeymoon phase and you're not sure, that's fine. I'm going to keep making this content. I hope you keep watching it. But if today's the day that you decide I'm going to support Bardwell, there's a link in the video description below to my Patreon. I'd love to have you as a supporter. The first quadcopter we're gonna fly is gonna be the Analog FR16. We're also gonna to have to choose which battery to use. Flywoo has sent both 750 milliamp hour and 450 milliamp hour packs. The 750 is obviously gonna be heavier but give longer flight time. And I tried to look up which one is like the intended one and I can't find any indication, but Flywoo sent more of the 750s, so that's what we're gonna use as like the baseline. Don't worry, we'll try the 450s as well. Ooh, the first thing I notice is that it's pretty fast. Let's do a little full throttle. Full throttle, uh, not ridiculous punch out power. I mean, I don't know what I expected, but uh, it is nice that it didn't like sag. I didn't get any battery voltage warning. The battery's holding in pretty good. Camera looks nice and colorful. Uh, no problem in that sharp turn there. No little shaking from prop wash oscillation or anything. Seems pretty smooth. Feels nice in these corners. I mean, I'm not a racer, but I got a lot of control here. Oh yeah, wow. I'm impressed so far. Oh, this is, I could do this all day. It's a nice little racer. This is great. Wow. Woo! It doesn't have the same sort of fling as a big quad, but that, I mean, it doesn't weigh, it weighs like you know, 25 grams, so you know, I don't know what you expect. It has a lot of the same handling characteristics that you want from a oh, bigger quad, for sure. And it's missing a lot of the negative handling characteristics from like a tiny whoop. Like if I do a power loop here, I don't tank into the ground. I can pull out of a big dive like this at the last minute, no problem. Jump on the throttle, no problem. Uh, 250, sorry about the helicopter there. 250 milliwatt video transmitter, oh boy. Now I am gonna turn the face that way just a little bit. See how I can do going out here. A Little bit of trouble here. This is not a scientific line of sight test. It's just like bullshitting around but getting a little break up here. What if I go down this way and like try to go behind this house? Oh, it's pretty bad. I could force my way through it, but it's pretty bad. I mean, I don't know, it's, yeah, like, I don't know what I expect, but. Pretty bad, pretty bad. Like there's a, a van. Right here, there's a house, like, still. I'm not going around through here. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it, oh boy. I go slow, there's little scraggle branches. All right, so six minutes off that 750 milliamp hour 1S is pretty impressive, especially given that was some fairly spirited flying. The next thing I wanna know is, what difference does the dead cat layout make? And the eagle-eyed among you will notice that these aren't the same props that was on the other one. The other one had a three-blade prop. This has a four-blade prop. And you're, you'll be like, well, that's, you're not controlling for all the variables. But um, Flywoo says that they suggest using these four-blade props for the dead cat and three-blade for the freestyle, the FR. So that's just what we're going to do. And if the geometry was going to be an issue, we would see it in snap rolls. But we don't see any... Oh, hello, get in there. I don't see any, like, it's not turning or yawing to the side. Do you see that when I do the snap roll, it's still pointed exactly where it was? 
It's not yawing at all, right? And that's what would happen if you were having an issue with a dead cat layout. When you rolled, you would also get a tiny amount of yaw and you'd end up the end the roll facing a different direction than you started. I'm not seeing any of that. So I feel like the distinction between dead cat and freestyle layout is really a personal choice, but I don't think it's gonna make like a big, big difference in the handling, at least not that I can notice. The bigger difference is gonna be probably the props. I would still pick the freestyle just on principle because especially with analog, who cares if you have props in view? You're not making a freaking movie for Michael Bay. Let's go on though. Let's, let's get off the analog one and see how the HD Zero does. Now, with the HD Zero one, first thing we're gonna notice, of course, is that the video looks way better. There's people who say that HD Zero doesn't look better than analog video. They are wrong. They are dumb. They don't know what they're talking about, in my humble opinion. Humble, not so humble. Um, HD Zero looks way freaking better. Uh, the other thing we, sh we might notice is a small increase in weight and handling. But I think these motors are gonna be powerful enough that it's gonna be pretty subtle. Let's try this little shimmy again. I might be seeing just a little more prop wash in that turn right here. A little shutter there, that's prop wash oscillation and is the result of the quadcopter moving backwards into the turbulent air from the props. Ooh, that was close. Uh, but yeah, a little shimmy there, whereas I think on the analog quad, which is just a little lighter, I think that I wasn't getting that quite as much, if at all. Still, really fine. Oh wait, I was doing a turn here, wasn't I? I, I got rid of that turn. What did I, uh... Woo, yay. Let's do a big pump, big pump. A zero throttle. Little shutter there, stayed in control. Over the house, full throttle. Full throttle, wow, okay, I had to work for that one. So I think we're feeling the effect of the weight just a little more as we come down here we have to work just a little harder to stay off the ground on these big drops. I don't think you're gonna notice that as much if you're racing, but maybe for freestyle. Uh, let's head on over here to the edge of the yard. Looking pretty good here. HD Zero video transmitter holding in just fine. Let's try to go behind the house. Will it be better than analog? Uh, that's a tough one. I do feel like the image is a little easier maybe to see through the static if I just kind of defocus de my eyes like a, like if I was moving fast, this would be bad. I don't think this would be flyable. But for sitting slow, I think it's okay. And maybe a little preferable to analog. All of these guys fly really well. I feel like I have a ton of control. And I can do stuff like that that I could not do with like a traditional Tiny Whoop, acro stuff like that, that would just be out of the question with a traditional Tiny Whoop. It would just lose its mind. Damn. This is, uh, I'm amazed. I can't believe this battery's hanging in. I can't believe this is, I, more up tilt, please. To be able to fly like this with something so small, this just all out cruising, full throttle, amazing. Amazing. So much control for little precise moves like that too. Oh, oh, battery's getting low. Oh no. <laughs> oh well. Alrighty, it's time for Walk Snail to get its walk snail in the sun. The other thing you gotta know is that Walksnail is the only one of these video systems to have onboard recording. 
And what that means is that right now, you're looking at the pure video feed from the camera in 1080p resolution with no degradation due to uh, the radio link. So if I fly over here, what you're gonna see is everything looks fine in the onboard recording, but if we go back to what I see in the goggles, there's a reduction in video quality because of how far away I am from myself. And you know, that's just how it works. Um, so uh, it's not like the quality of the onboard recording is as good as like a GoPro, but it might be better than, well, it might be something. Uh, but for most of this recording, I want you guys looking at what I'm seeing in the goggles so you can get a sense of how the video system works. Uh, and you can really see what I am seeing. Ooh, it really feels like I'm higher in the throttle. I could be a just placebo effect or imagination, but no. It really feels like I'm higher in the throttle, presumably due to the additional weight. I mean, obviously due to the additional weight. How does Waxnell do behind the house? Freaking amazing. Sheesh. This is, this is, wow. Okay, impressed, super impressed. It's just a little more work through these turns to stay tight. It's just a little less snappy and responsive. Um, this one probably would really benefit from the 450 milliamp hour battery, and which would give you shorter flight time, what would bring the weight down closer to the other two by some margin. Nevertheless, it's okay. I'm doing okay. I'm just not quite doing as good. Let's do like a big building dive or something. See how it behaves. Oh God, oh God, I got on the throttle way too late there. <laughs> okay, that was, that was me. That was not the quad, that was me. Well, that sucks. The walk snail video transmitter is not powering up. That's unlucky. Um, this is not the first time I've crashed this. I have been flying these for a little bit before I sat down to record. Uh, so it's only like the seventh time I've crashed it, but still, that's really disappointing. Just bad luck for Walksnail. It could be the flight controller. Maybe the flight controller. I don't think it's the flight controller. Before I tell you which one of these guys is my favorite, if you already know which one's your favorite, there are links down in the video description below. Those links are affiliate links. And what that means is that whenever you click that link and then make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, I get a little commission. It's the easiest way for you to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Before you do your normal shopping, whatever you're shopping for, find one of my affiliate links, click the link, go do your shopping. It means really means a lot to me. Um, getting choked up, it means so much to me. So I was really surprised by which one of these turned out to be my favorite. And uh, I'm really glad that I did this test. Because first of all, I was a little skeptical of the whole sort of 1.6 open prop ripper category. My thinking was that they're too powerful and fast for indoor flying, especially because the open props mean you're gonna sort of tear up your walls and furniture just a little bit and just crash a lot. Whereas with a tiny whoop, you just bounce off the wall and keep going. I still think I was mostly right about that. If you're somebody as good a pilot as like Bubby FPV, he has the Bobito, which is kind of similar to this category. Um, if you're as good a pilot as him, then you're gonna have no problem flying indoors. You're gonna tear it up, more power to you. But for average people who are gonna bounce off the walls and bounce off the furniture, I think an a closed prop design like a, a tiny whoop is more appropriate. But I was completely wrong about them being not really powerful enough to fly out here. It's not a super windy day, but they're fine. They're clearly fine. They can get done whatever they want to get done. And for this type of flying, sort of jungle gym acro or racing, or gosh, even some kind of semi-high speed cruising, they're freaking amazing. <laughs> amazing. The one that was my favorite, surprisingly, was the HD Zero. And it's surprising because when I reviewed the two inch version of this very same platform, the HD Zero was my least favorite because it's like the worst video link in terms of range and penetration. And in that size, in the two inch size, the weight of the walk snail was more than offset by the power of the quad. It was just basically, it flew fine. I thought that was the best balance of video link and handling. But in this size class, it really feels like the walk snail suffers. Even when you go down to the 450 milliamp hour battery, well, 
I didn't get to fly the freestyle version with the 450. I only flew it with the 750, and I only flew the dead cat with the 450, so maybe that balances out. But it, the analog one obviously flew the best, but had terrible video. The HC-01 for me was the sweet spot between great handling and great video performance. Uh, but probably you've already got a video system picked out and you're just gonna buy the one that goes with whatever video system you go with. If you do, I strongly recommend getting the freestyle version, not the dead cat, because I just don't care about props in view when I'm doing something this small. This footage isn't going on, it's not, I don't care. It's not, I'm not using it for to film a commercial. And the Freestyle one handles better. And then I feel like the 750 battery is fine, at least for the HD0 and the, and the analog one. But obviously the 450 is going to give you even more punch and power. The choice is ultimately up to you. Before you decide, maybe you'd like to check out my review of the two-inch version of this quadcopter. Oh, and by the way, the two-inch version also comes with DJI. So DJI people who are wondering what you can get out of something this small, I'll put a card on screen if you want to check that out and a uh, link in the video description if you can't see the card for some reason. See you there.